Hey sailors, welcome to the crew. I'm Sailor Agenda, and this is my let's play of Rule the Waves 3 as Great Britain. In the last episode, we finally ended our war with Nazi Germany in victory, and we are now entering the post-war peacetime period as 1949 begins. Post-war. I have a decent bit of money, actually. The fleet has taken a bit of a beating. Uh, look. It's a bit radical, but... I know I only rebuilt these not even that long ago, but it's pretty well demonstrated to me that the Rodneys are too old to continue in modern combat. The Collingwoods, practically speaking, with 12-inch guns are also... <sighs> there are so many 12-inch gun ships still floating around in the world because of the treaty. Even in the American fleet. But I don't really believe in them. It's a bold step, but I'm going to scrap those as well. That leaves us four gun-armed surface capital ships, which probably is not enough. I'm not going to waste money on a battle cruiser in this day and age. I am going to design... One last Super Dreadnought class, I think. Let's see, this had a 14-inch belt and a 6-inch deck. That seems reasonable. But we need to be faster and more powerful. Let's see here. If I want to go 30 knots, 15-inch belt, 6-inch deck, 16-inch turrets... Maximum torpedo defense, all or nothing. Unit machinery, obviously. And I wanted to have, you know, I don't know, about something like four quad 18-inch turrets. Yeah, it's not possible, but <laughs> I didn't think it would be. But uh, we'll see what we can get, eh? Um, yes, we're obviously not going to be able to get no catapult, to be fair. That will save some weight. Next one, radar. I think we can't go over uh, five right now. Okay, so we absolutely cannot fit four quad 18-inch turrets. It's not happening. Um, what's this do? Oh, yeah, no. Um... I just want to see 10,000, 16.5, and, and 1.3. This is 17.7 and 1.3. Our 18 inch guns really do kind of suck. Maybe we should go for 17 inch guns. That would save a lot of weight. And the German guns did hit very, very hard. That said, technically speaking, it's possible to replace the guns later. Um. Okay, obviously we're not going to fit all quad turrets. Let's try all triples. It's still not going to happen, but it's closer. Um, probably settle for a bit less armor. still ungodly heavy. Wait, there's no way we can do it. What's our shipyard limit? 67,000. Okay. So we have to get it under this weight. Using 17-inch guns would make it a lot more practicable. Holy 
like how that technically works, although that's the wrong turret actually. My god, that works and then some? Auto loader, director. Gods, those are heavy. Um... Well, save a lot of weight on that, though. I mean, could I get a thicker belt? I could. Significantly thicker. Okay, but if I didn't, what could I save in money? 8600. I could build it for... 400 at the same time. That doesn't impress me that much. It'd be worth just getting the thicker belt. Stuff for secondary armor. Turret tops. Yeah. Okay. Well, this thing is ludicrous. Um. It's called the Albion class. We're going to build at most two of these. They are ludicrous. But that right there is 30 knots, 14 and a half inch belt, 6 inch deck, 8 18 inch guns and an all forward layout, 24 5 inch, 23 inch, all director, dual purpose, auto loaded 3 inch. Um, as many AA guns as you can physically fit, maximum torpedo defense, inclined belt, unit machinery. It's a little ludicrous, as I just said, but let's go for it. Um... The all big gun battleship is dying, but not necessarily dead yet. Frankly, they were more important than carriers in the recent war still. Uh... Okay, I think we only lost one Canada, and that's rebuilding. However, we did lose four Bristols in the end. We need four new light cruisers and a new heavy cruiser. Cumberland class. The Cumberland class is a little dated, though. Well, it's not that bad. We could probably just put out one Cumberland. 
the sake of like uniformity, I mean priority right now, I think, has to be, well, the one replacement heavy cruiser and the four replacement light cruisers would be nice, yes. Along with getting more destroyers, but, like, I'd like to get 100 destroyers. But, I think the immediate priority has to be to get carriers are uh, converted to jet operations probably however we only have light jet fighters so maybe not although we can still operate non-jets from jet carriers but it costs capacity or it gets complicated Specifically, a tech there. It's a shame our 18 inch guns aren't better. Hopefully, we can get better ones at some point and retrofit them. Um. Alright. What else am I spending money on then? I think we need to design the carrier class at least. Let's see here. This carries 85 aircraft. But that's three jets. And you make, what, 33 knots? Dang. That's probably more than is necessary. With what? Two inch flight deck, two inch deck. 2 inch flight deck, 2 inch deck, and 33 knots is what the Ark Royals have. Let's see what we can get in terms of... 32 knots will be enough for me. Maybe a 3 inch deck... 2.5 is fine. Better still, at least. Maximum torpedo defense. I think spacious is needed. Not yet, but it will be soon, so maybe we keep it. Um... 3-inch main guns probably are optimal, because we're going for auto-loading, though. Um, we're going for anti-air purposes, mainly. And we're going to need that angled flight deck, thanks. Catapults, yep. Wait, I only have two. Just checking. Like eagle, it is. Um, jet capable, yes. That does hugely increase that, but that's all right. Uh, jet capable, angled flight deck, deck edge lifts, flight deck. They both need to be checked, right? Yeah. Uh, catapults, radar tech, never mind mines or anti submarine weapons. I do no, I can't do four inch autoloaders, so let's do three inch, yeah. Okay, and then the question is how many aircraft we want to operate. Oh, and we need flight deck armor, at least two inches. Okay, I'm thinking this is not happening. Uh well it is it can happen, technically. To build an Eagle capable of operating 100 jet aircraft with a total of 4.5 inches of deck armor and a 32 knot speed, require it to be 63,000 tons, which is a lot. Now, if I was to cut back to, let's say, 80 jet aircraft, the cost at 100 aircraft is... 6300 for 30 months. Cost for 80 is going to end up being... Uh, 
5,500 for 30 months. It's a lot of money saved, to be honest. That's so trivial that I think I'd rather just have the extra weight capacity for future upgrades. Um, oh, I can only build a 48,800 ton carrier. Huh. Okay, well, that makes up my mind for me in that regard. Uh, 48,800? Yep. We haven't developed super carriers yet, apparently. So, basically... How many aircraft can I fit on that? It's not 75, but let me type that. It's close. 70. Well, it's gonna have to do, I think. They're all jets. I mean, it's a thoroughly modern carrier. Okay, start developing that design, and then we're gonna need a light cruiser design, and uh, possibly also a heavy cruiser design. Oh boy. 515 enemy aircraft shot down, 84% of them by our fighters. Yeah, our cap is consistently doing by far the most damage. Uh, what else? I have too much money, but I'm gonna spend it all on these big ships, so I should probably just save it, honestly. Um... I could just lay a Cumberland if I'm feeling slightly lazy about this. Like, I know it's technically an obsolete design, but it's not that old, and... What would I do? I mean, I could stick SSMs on as the main thing. Maybe I should, though. Yeah. Okay, tell you what. Let me take a look at the Cumberland design. See if I can do anything in the way of, like, stick on the max torpedo defense. Uh, stick on... The latest radar tech. Purpose. Radar director. Extra fire control. Electro optical director. Basically all that, but then also give me four SSM launchers. That will displace eh, 15,500 tons. It's not that much heavier, to be fair. Um, okay, I think that's a pretty reasonable modification, honestly. When we gained electro optical, radar director, better radar, and SSM launchers, plus torpedo defense. So, this is a significant upgrade on the Cumberlands, but like. We are, oh, very dangerously top-heavy. Oh, it's because of the, um, SSMs, but can't be helped. Oof. 
That is going to take a chunk out of our AA capacity, though. Uh, oh well. Do we already have a Sussex class? Oh no, it's Suffolk. Okay. Anyway, that's going to be a one off, so that's fine. Uh, and we're going to need new light cruisers as well, four of them. We have our new destroyer design, it's the Legion class. We just uh, need to build more of them because there's only four in service right now. But let's save our money for now because. Oh. We should go for the post. Wait, sort by ability. Incompetent, Captain Rhodes of the Victorious. Goodbye. Oh, mono pulse radar. Search radar five. Nice. Uh, yes, actually, because well, hold on. I will do it, but I'll do it manually. Um, yeah. We have a new fighter. We have a new torpedo bomber. I'll be at its an upgrade version, but yeah. Probably time already for a new like jet fighter too, but. Uh, the Hawker Typhoon did good work in the war, but it is kind of old. And it's literally our most common aircraft type by a lot, apparently. In part because the Short Shark has not been entirely superseded by the Bristol Bisley yet. We don't have jet bombers yet, so... At this point, let's prioritize bomb load and toughness. Uh, I think speed and range should be just fine in any case. Like, I haven't had concerns about range with modern dive bombers. But nine months, huh? That's a lot more than it used to take. But it makes sense. The procurement process does take a lot longer to sidle. Oh, good grief. Um, USA and France have signed an alliance. Russians are building a new carrier. 67 aircraft. No flight deck washdown system yet. Yeah, we're gonna lay Sussex before we forget about her. She's a one off. Um. Stop. That will save us some money, which we can apply to our six capital ships that we're about to lay down. Oh. That's awkward. I don't want to start a war yet. No super carriers yet, but that probably means we're close, unfortunately. Hold on, let me figure out how to lay these. Uh, let's see here. These are 8,700 a turn. These are 5,000 a turn. These are objectively probably more useful. Nonetheless, I'm laying down two Albion class battleships immediately. Um. And the Eagles will just have to wait until the Albion's... Not, maybe not until the Albion's clear, but... Uh, they'll have to wait at least a little while. And that will give us the second most battleship tonnage in the world. Because everybody is starting to wind their battleship fleets down. That said, we have zero battle cruisers. Everybody except Spain has at least one still, so... Yeah. Two new destroyers, four-inch autoloaders, more effective. New fast Japanese light jet fighters. Uh, that's a definite no. He's going to cut our budget by a lot. Oh, that's bad. Okay, well... Nonetheless, it's a no. Uh, let's let's increase the budget. Or, uh, let's build railroad infrastructure and such. Struggling to develop the carrier battle group. I should get us up to five submarines so we can at least advance the tech. 
Although our submarine tech is not good, but... Bolshie class, that's a nice light cruiser. No, a new light jet fighter. That could save me some procurement time. Let's see, it's faster, longer ranged, it's got less firepower and less maneuverability, so that's not great, but... It is faster and longer ranged, I'll take it. Thank you, Vickers. trouble right now is light jet fighters are doing great, but uh, oh, Italy, you've occupied Greece. How'd you pull that off? PBX warheads, more damaging torpedoes, rod fragmentation warhead, higher AA and SAM hit chances. MiG-77. Let's turn down intel on them. I would say it's a shame the Nazi regime didn't actually collapse, but I would say uh, Russia or Japan are our most logical next enemies. These two things don't make sense together. Oh yeah, they are building a new 51,000 ton battlecruiser to replace the one they lost. Well, joke's on you, Germany. Mine are 67,000 tons. Russia's building a 64,000 tonner. Holy hell, the Americans are building a 75,000 ton battleship. And a pair of... Oh. Oh my god, they have four 50,000 ton battlecruisers in service. In addition to their existing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 48,000 ton battle cruisers. What the hell, America? They don't have that many carriers. Is this what would happen if, for some reason, the world hadn't quite realized that carriers were it yet, so the US just decided to put everything into battle cruisers instead of Essexes? Just, just seven Lexingtons and six Constitutions? Every one of them a gigantic battle cruiser. Well, that's something. We definitely can't match that. There's no sense in even trying. No. Oh. Lucifer. The bad destroyer. Is about to hit 1950. Two new destroyers. Spanish medium bomber, not too worried about that. New dive bomber prototypes are available from Avro, Bristol, Gloucester, and Hawker. Uh, let's see, the Gloucester is the fastest. The Gloucester is also the longest ranged. Uh, the Bristol is the sh or the Hawker is the shortest ranged. They all have the same firepower, which is a lot more. The Avro and Bristol are more maneuverable, but the Gloucester is the toughest. They all have the same bomb load. So given the Gloucester is the fastest, the toughest, and is equal in everything else except maneuverability, oh, and the longest ranged, I think we go with the Gloucester design. 1,400 pound bomb at heavy load and a 300 nautical mile range with heavy load, so that's not bad, yeah. And a better Bristol Bisley, it's faster, and a bit longer ranged, a bit more firepower as well, although it loses maneuverability. Well, I'll take it. New Italian fighter. And with that, end turn. No. Oh. Rising prosperity, increased personnel costs. Okay, we replace our last lost Canada. We commission a couple of destroyers. The Austrians have a fighter. 3,500 ton destroyers now available. I don't really have anything to put on them yet, but they're available. But yeah, because I think we had 3,000 already, but 2,600 was the maximum practical. Like, maybe I could get a little more speed, but otherwise... 8 5-inch guns, SSMs, death charge throwers, mortars, torpedo tubes... What else am I going to put on one at 3,500 tons, really? We'd just be pushing it up towards... 40 knots or something ridiculous, but it would add a lot of cost for what has to be a high production volume unit, you know? 
Uh, right, so we did just commission Dublin. I guess we'll let her work up before we put her on foreign stations. But that's the foreign stations force restored. We still need four Bristols. And we need one heavy cruiser as well. Which is building. So we're building Sussex. Once she's done, we really have to lay down the carriers once she's done, if at all possible. Uh, and then we'll look at light cruisers, which will probably... The Bristols are going to be over 20 years old by then, so it'll probably just we'll replace the existing eight Bristols as well with some uh, guided missile light cruisers. But we'll see. That's going to be for next time. For now, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed our big war with Nazi Germany. And I hope you all have a nice day. This is Seedlord Jenda, signing off.